I met you because of BitTensor. So let's let's start with BitTensor first before we get into all the other aspects of your life and your history. So my first question is, what is BitTensor? You know, first off, I want to say that's a good question because if 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 I if you ask me what's Ethereum, there's like an easy one line answer. If you ask me what's Solana, what's I don't know Polygon, there's easy answers. What's what's great about BitTensor is that there's many layers to this answer until you're getting really deep and philosophical, or there are other layers where you're getting really technical. But let's just say BitTensor is the intersection of crypto slash decentralization and AI. So if you wanna if you wanna create an AI for one one thousandth the cost of ChatGPT or these other centralized AI things, you would use a crypto to- a decentralized crypto token like BitTensor, like Tau. And you know, and there are. Did you ever see in the 90s, there was this thing called SETI, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. So what this did was this organization, SETI, took a picture of the sky every night of the stars, and then they would divide it up into thousands of pieces and send each small piece to a volunteer who was volunteering their computer to run some algorithms on this tiny piece of the sky. And then they would, everybody would send every night all the photos back to the centralized source, and it would figure out if aliens were communicating from outer space. But it was decentralized. So, so meaning you could be a billion computers connected up to SETI or a million or a thousand, like it was infinitely scalable. And that's how all these decentralized tokens work, whether it's Tau or other ones. But Basically, you know, with Tau, you could divide up an AI problem into thousands of pieces and, you know, send it out to whatever computer is participating in Tau. The people who donate their resources get rewarded in Tau tokens or, you know, what are called subnet tokens, which we can go over later. And AI is built. AI models are built. And there's all there's all sorts of AI businesses and AI models that use BitTensor for this. It's not just people think of AI. They think it's just ChatGPT. but there's there's hundreds and thousands of types of AI businesses out there of which BitTensor can do any of them. It's amazing. And you personally like have an AI background. So in college, you studied computer science and I'm assuming that's when you first got into AI or what was your introduction yeah. to AI? Yeah. So I, I studied uh, AI as an undergrad, even wrote academically published papers on AI. And then I went to graduate school for AI. I worked on, when I was in grad school, I worked on a predecessor of what became Deep Blue, which was the first chess computer in the 90s to beat the world chess champion. So I worked for a little bit on that. And IBM actually offered me a job to continue working on Deep Blue, but I I turned it down because I liked a girl and I didn't want to move away. But then we broke up two months later and then I was thrown out of graduate school. So I probably should have taken the job at IBM. But and then I've been working on and off on AI ever since, really. So so I've had like a, a, a multi-decade background in AI. Deep Blue. So you contributed to Deep Blue, essentially. Yeah. I mean, originally it was called Chip Test and then it was called Deep Thought. And then when IBM bought it, because IBM's color is blue, it was called Deep Blue. But it was very interesting because it it was actually a new take on AI. So you it used to be people thought, oh, if I'm going to program AI, I need to put as much human intelligence into the program as I can. Like, you know, if like with chess, people were writing these complicated programs like if, you know, the king is being attacked, then that's not good. Or if you have a rook on an open file and that's good. They were trying to put as much human intelligence as possible into the program. But the innovation of Deep Blue was, hey, speed is more important than quality. And the less human intelligence we can get in here, we'll just figure out who has more pieces, white or black. And that tells you, and then we're going to look at a trillion positions a second. So we're going to build the software right into the hardware. And that was kind of the innovation. It became like this supercomputer just devoted to chess. And they proved that that was kind of the way that, that human intelligence was less important than speed. And to this day, that model still works. Like if you look at ChatGPT, there's not really human pro, like don't get involved. What they do is they just have this gigantic neural network and they throw every piece of text ever written into ChatGPT 
and they spend years just crunching this text with neural networks without giving any indication from humans. Oh, this is, he's talking about Bob Dylan here, and this person's talking about relationships here. There's no computer, the neural networks figure out all the context, and that was what built the AI. There was no real human intervention until the first version was done. And then there was some human reinforcement learning. And what first sparked your interest in chess? Because I, from my research, I you later became a grandmaster in chess, right? Not a grandmaster, but a master. Grandmaster is stronger than me. But yeah, I, you know, I didn't get into it until later in life, meaning I was about 17. To be really great, you have to start when you're like five or six. But I quickly got very good and good enough to be a chess master. And I just love the fact that, you know, you would kind of disappear into this dangerous world. You're getting either getting killed or you're killing, but it's like a safe way, just like with all games, it's a safe way to experience the highs and lows of life. And there's so much depth to chess. You know, culturally, chess is very significant. Like if you look at any TV show, you know, there's usually a chess board in the background somewhere and it sort of indicates, oh, this person's a deeper thinker because he's got the chess board in the background. So there's some cultural significance. And during COVID, uh, you know, the Queen's Gambit came out on Netflix. And so I got into it again. I had stopped playing for 27 years. After I hit the master title, I totally stopped playing because there are business benefits to having the chess master title because of the cultural significance. So I stopped playing completely. But during the Queen's Gambit, I started playing again. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to play. I'm going to prove that as an older person, 27 years later, I could be as good as when I was younger. And I'm going to write a book about this. And it's been hard because I have not gotten better than I was when I was younger. When you're old, I shouldn't say when you're old, when you're older, the brain really changes. Like there are fundamental changes physiologically in the brain, which makes it harder to play chess versus kids versus younger people. And so it's been a, an interesting but but difficult time, at least playing. But it's but it's weird because going into it as an older person, I'm like neck deep now in like the chess culture, which I've never was before as a younger person. And before I wander too far off track here, let's let's get into what you're doing with BitTensor and Tau Synergies, X Tau. Sure. What inspired this idea, first off? And then two, it is currently the largest treasury company of Tau with over forty two thousand Tau. So yeah. What inspired this idea? Well, two things. One is I've been writing about crypto for a long time. So I have a a, a, a newsletter service of subscribers that subscribe to me for my writing on crypto. And I recommended Tau in t October of 2023 when it was $49, went all the way up to 700. You know, now it's down to like 350 or 340. And so I've always been a, a fan or I've always liked Tau. But two things happened. One is probably starting around February with Detail, I really started to do a deep dive. What is going on here? And as they say, I got Tao pilled. Like I became obsessed with the the depths of almost how beautiful Tao is structured. Like Tao is not just about AI. It's kind of a small, not a small, but it's, it's like a microcosm, microcosm of what capitalism should be in its purest form. Tao is like a pure form of, of capitalism. Again, not just AI. Like, just as a, a sidebar, I know we do a lot of sidebars. I could create, I could recreate Uber within Tau. So I can say, I'm, I can make a subnet called Uber. The miners are drivers who have empty seats and are willing to sell those empty seats. The validators are people who take queries from customers. Let's say a customer says, oh, I need a ride from downtown New York to uptown New York. The validator could match the customer with the miner, the particular miner who has a car going from willing to go from downtown to uptown, the subnet handles the transaction and customer service and all that kind of stuff. So you could recreate like a multi-billion dollar company, Uber, just totally within Tau. It's people focus on AI, which is great, but you can recreate almost any digital company within, within, within BitTensor, Tau. So that's, and I think that will happen eventually, like maybe years, but it'll happen eventually. But Here's the other thing. So back in January, a company reached out to me. It was a public company, Upexi, and they're like, "Hey, can you tell us what this more about Bitcoin? We want to do a Bitcoin thing like Michael Saylor is doing with MicroStrategy." And I said, "You shouldn't do that. There's only one Michael Saylor, and you don't even know anything about Bitcoin. Don't 
don't do that. You're not, it's not like they're going to stop asking Michael Saylor to go to conferences and ask you instead, like you don't know anything. And But I said to him, why don't you find some other token to do this strategy around and be a little innovative? And so he eventually did Solana, and that was like the first Solana treasury company. They raised like about $100 million and and it's been somewhat successful of raising, you know, doing this. So then suddenly there was a lot of Me Too Solana companies and every bank was calling me and every shell was calling me like, hey, we want to do a $200 million deal with hype, blah, 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 or whatever. And, uh, you know, we want to use XYZ company. And I kept thinking, what's the benefit of doing $200 million? Like it only helps the banker. They raise 7% and then they're gone. And all the shareholders, the stock jumps up and then all the shareholders bail. And if I was advising, I would be having a, a long-term deal. So I'm not going to benefit. The management team's not going to benefit. Like it just seems, it seemed all these big deals that were happening were stupid. So I called a friend of mine who ran a public company. It was a failed Alzheimer's drug company. And they had about 15 million cash in the bank. And I said, look, there's this, don't think about, I want to do a crypto strategy, but don't do Bitcoin, Solana, Ethereum. Those are too big. Like the most innovative token out there is Tau. And I explained it to my friend and I said, let's not raise any money. You already have 15 million in cash. Let's just do it. Like then if we want to, the money will be available. Like that's no problem. Let's just do the strategy. Like the company was trading below its net asset value. It had 15 million cash. It was trading for like $10 million market cap. So I said, let's just buy Tau. So to his credit, my friend's credit, he did it. We changed the name of the company to Tau Synergies, changed the symbol to Tau X. We, we right away bought $15 million worth of Tau and we're off to the races. So that's really how it got 